you ask a question about why do you do genomics, why do you sequence crops, and what do you get for it, and what is the end game? That's just the beginning of the story, discovery. Africa has some of the most nutritious crops in the world and some of the, the most productive areas in the world and you still see uh, malnutrition. If uh, children in a certain age are not well nourished, they get stunted. They are not as strong as other children. Their brain will not develop in the right way. And this will never be reversible. Even if you feed these children excellently afterwards, they will not change anymore. It's done. In Kenya, for example, 33% of all our children under five are stunted. Nutritional optimization is the most important thing we can do. Improve nutrition, make plants better. The ability to look at genomes, read genomes, interact with genomes, all of these things have been going at an incredibly fast rate due to advances in technologies. And imagine it as an encyclopedia of all the information you could want to know about that particular plant. Genomics helps you have a barrier to the collapse that is caused by plants that are not adaptable to as much climate change, not adaptable to pest and disease, not adaptable to higher yields or nutrient and water use efficiency. The large seed companies will never work on these small crops because there's not a big enough market. There's a limited market. And because of that, it's up to people like ourselves in the African Orphan Crops Consortium and all of our uncommon collaborators to actually put this into play. It's men and women. We're training people in Africa with African scientists to go back to the African institutions that they work for. It's a collective that's working together to do this project. Genetics has been my passion for a very long time. Within the last seven years, I would say, I've been involved in really trying to crack genomes of crops. I've been focusing actually on, on underutilized crops in Africa. We utilize the genetic information we get from the crops. We work together with the breeders, so you know, out of these hundred genotypes, I know this particular one has all the kind of things that I'm looking for, and this one has the others. All that breeding is done in Mendelian genetics, so taking pollen from the male and to the female flower, you're not doing anything that would be called transgenics or genetic engineering. This is traditional breeding. This combination of parentage is so important, and the speed to get it to the farmer and then from the farmer to the table is so critical. We're trying to shrink the five to 7,000 years to domestication down to two or three years. With a fully sequenced, assembled, and annotated genome, you have order. And from that order, you can make decisions. Here, with this plant environmental lab, apart from controlling the conditions, we're able to use very minimal soil amount. At the same time, you can control the nutrients that you want to check on. And within three weeks, you will be able to have data. Shrinking the time on decision making mm. so it's real versus let's grow it, let's grow it again, let's grow it again. And the challenges you're going to get in the field. It's really challenging to have experiments in the field because conditions change and you cannot really control them. It's hard to ask national research institutions to do this kind of work and a farmer can't risk it because it yes. really is his livelihood, it's his yeah, food. Yeah, definitely. So we step in mm. and add one more piece of nutrition yeah. that's not traditional nutrition, but is the cutting edge of mm -hmm, nutrition. Mm -hmm. Someone would say, well, why do you need to do all of this stuff? In 25 years, it will, it will just be at about 1 billion, 750 million people in Africa alone. And you can't expect to feed that kind of population on chance. I, mean, I have no idea what technology will come in 10 years in sequencing. There will be more breakthroughs, but what we have is extraordinary. So I'm, I'm quite content that the knowledge we have will be lasting.